Digital citizenship, what's it all about? We're about to talk about that in just a moment. Do you want to improve your classroom management skills? Do you want to increase student engagement? How about amplifying student success? You've come to the right place. Welcome to Things That Work. Be sure and give this video a thumbs up if you like it and leave your comments down below, please. It helps fuel future videos. Also, don't forget to click the subscribe button and the bell next to it so that you'll know every time we post a new video. Digital citizenship. You know, I don't know how many of you grew up with an actual landline in your home, but my parents made it very clear that I was not to touch that phone until I learned how to use it. And that included learning how to answer the phone, learning that when you call someone how many times to let it ring before you hang up learning basic phone etiquette that was kind of I guess in a way similar to what digital citizenship is today students do not know how to use their devices and unfortunately many of us adults we fall into the same trap because we don't pay attention to how we use our devices. But it's important for us to realize that these lessons are lessons that not only students need, but we as adults need as well. First thing I'm gonna suggest is to use digital teachable moments. And by that, what I mean is when students are talking about a social media problem that they're having, or they're talking about things that have happened on social media, I always point out that nothing on social media is private. Nothing is private and it lasts forever. Now immediately they come back and shout about how Snapchat it goes away whatever the current app is that they're using and I point out that that's just not the case in order for those companies to maintain the ability to defend themselves in the case of a lawsuit they have to keep copies of everything and they do now they don't keep them online for everyone to see but those copies exist and they will never go away another thing you can do is pay attention to the news because there are times when topics about cell phone abuse internet misuse that type of thing make the news bring it to the attention of the students. Ask them if they heard about it. 99% of the time the answer will be no because they don't watch the news. They're watching YouTube or they're watching Instagram or something else. So bring it to their attention of what's going on in their world that they are unaware of. The next thing is to find digital connections to your lessons. There are all sorts of resources out there and if you could point out some extra resources for the students to use that go along with the lessons you are teaching, there's a good chance they will at least look at them. Uh, they may not go to them and use them a lot, but they will probably take a look at it and see what you're talking about. So finding those connections so the students can, on their own, go and learn more about what you're actually teaching in class. The third thing is to empower parents. I know a lot of times we have only a brief meeting at open house with parents, but empower them to be in control of the electronics and of the digital world in their household. I am pretty big at sending out emails with ideas on how to monitor phone use, how to monitor digital digital use and how important that is. And I do that on a fairly regular basis for my parents. I also let them know about things that can be found online that pertain to my class. The exact same things that I talked about in the last point. Now the parents also have access to that information as well, which makes it even more likely that the students will eventually find their way to that site. Empower parents to be in control of the digital world in their household. The next thing is to share the importance of digital citizenship with your colleagues. Make sure they understand why teaching digital citizenship is important because it can't just happen in your class and your curriculum. It needs to happen in all of our classes and all of our curriculum. The digital world is everywhere and it's in every class, it's in every school, it's in every home. And it's important that we communicate the importance of teaching digital citizenship. And finally, model digital citizenship. Occasionally, I will leave my phone ringer on and my phone will go off in class and I won't even look at it. Students will freak out. Aren't you going to see who's calling? Aren't you going to? No, it doesn't matter. I accidentally left my ringer on. I shouldn't have done that. I don't answer the phone in class. That's not polite. That's not what we do. That's not the correct time. But what if someone's in danger? What if I can't do anything to help them? I can't do anything at all except worry about it, which would take away from my ability to teach. So I'm not going to be distracted by those things that I can have no control over. This is very difficult for students to really get their head around that I might actually be ignoring a phone call from my wife because they're just not used to ignoring anything that comes in as a personal message. And they're not used to answering things on their own time. They are controlled by their media. One of the things I've noticed 
therapist and one of the things I will say which I think also starts building a different way of thinking for young people is are you playing the video game or is the video game playing you? Are you using your digital device or is that digital device controlling your life? I enjoy learning with you, I enjoy teaching with you and together we can take over the world.